my beautiful babies. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be doing a cash movie news review. Go! Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Blade Runner 2049. We're going to be talking about the Rick and Morty sauce, Szechuan sauce incident. Also, Martin Scorsese has come out for Mother. Let's talk about it, let's get into it. Top story. Blade Runner 2049. I think okay. you found him. That's not possible. If this gets out, we've bought ourselves a war. A lot of you out there have been asking me for my opinion on the new Blade Runner 2049 film. It was sick, I saw it. I saw it in the dome, the Cinerama dome in Hollywood. So I had a huge screen. It was just like really beautiful. And I have to say that I think that this is absolutely a worthy sequel to Blade Runner. Uh, and this is definitely like a great sequel. Like it, it just, it really serves the purpose. It takes a lot of the themes that the first movie talked about, expanded on them in a lot of really cool ways. Uh, I thought that Ryan Gosling was really good. I thought he was really well cast in his role. Uh, I liked him, I think, a lot more than I liked Deckard, to be honest. I thought I really enjoyed his character a whole lot. I think he really played it well. It bombed. I saw that. A lot of people didn't go out and see it this weekend, which, I mean, it's surprising because I feel like, I mean, who the fuck doesn't want to see a rad Blade Runner film directed by, you know, Denis Villeneuve, you know? Like, who doesn't want to see that? But then on the other side, I'm like, well, the original bombed. So, you know, not everybody's for that heady sci-fi, sci-fi shit. And the thing that I like about Blade Runner and the sequel is that it talks about consciousness, you know, and, you know, when does a, a replicant, you know, have a consciousness. They're not robots, but I mean, they're like synthetic people. Yeah, synthetic people. So I really like that it talked about that a lot more in this one. Although it's still, the thing that I found the most frustrating about it was that I felt like it was a little bit vague and I feel like I'm gonna withhold, like I'm not gonna do any spoilers here and talk about any specifics uh, because I feel like I kind of want to see the movie again before I talk about it. I'm still processing it. And part of me feels like, I don't know if maybe I missed a few things because when I first saw it, it's like, it's this, such this monolithic film, you know, you just kind of have to let it happen to you and just like, let it wash over you. But I felt like maybe I missed some things, but maybe they just were intentionally unclear and maybe they were a little bit vague. Uh, well, I mean, I feel like the visuals, I mean, you're just, you're soaking in all these gorgeous visuals. I mean, this movie is so beautiful and it absolutely makes me feel like, yes, I am right back in Blade Runner, Blade Runner world in like 30 years. Like I totally bought it. The shot selections, the clothing design, the production design, like the visual effects, like the uh, audio, sound design. Sound design was amazing. I mean, like this was a very well crafted film. It was very well crafted and I really enjoyed it. Um, and that's the thing about Blade Runner, the first one is that it's just, it's aesthetics are just like phenomenal. And the thing I'm really most excited about, about this movie coming out is I feel like it's going to influence the style that are going on right now. And I feel like we're getting ready to get a lot more Blade Runner fashion because of this movie. And I'm really excited about that because I love Blade Runner clothes. Like who does not want to look like they live in that nightmare? I mean, even though it sucks to be there, I feel like, well, fuck, everybody looks so fucking cool. I mean, it can't be that bad, but whatever. Another small criticism I have is that I felt like it was a little empty with people. You know, we're supposed to be in this future that's like ultra crowded and like Los Angeles. And we like, we see these shots overhead of just like seeing how many buildings there are. But I never really felt like I got the sense of that. Like most of the time when we're with Ryan Gosling, it's very empty, like the spaces he's in. There's not a lot of people there. And, um, and even in Wallace's place, you know, it's just like you just see him and you just see Love, the uh, his replicant helper. And I wanted to see more people. I just wanna see more of the world and more of the texture of the people and how people live because it's such a cool, it's such a cool environment. Yeah, I wanna see a little bit more about how their society works, how people at the bottom are getting along, you know, more of the political situation that's going on. You know, I think I, I would have appreciated a little bit more than that. But again, at the same time, I feel like this was a really great film and I really enjoyed watching it. And I'm definitely gonna buy it on Blu-ray. I'll be watching it again in my life. Like it's just, This is another one of those movies where I'm gonna have a relationship with it. I will say with the Blade Runner movies, I generally watch them when I'm just like, kind of have a cold and I'm tired and I just want to like take a nap and then like wake up and it's still going, you know? Like it's the perfect movie for those sleepy, 
uh, Sundays where it's like raining and you don't feel so good. Uh, and this is like the perfect, like you keep it going. You know, now you have lots of hours of Blade Runner to watch when you have one of those days. It happens to me every few years. A Blade Runner's job is to hunt down replicants, manufactured humans you can't tell from the real thing. So I'm looking forward to watching it again when I have the flu. So <laughs> the main point is go see Blade Runner. If you haven't seen it already, go support this film. It's absolutely gorgeous. It is long, but I didn't feel like it felt that long. I felt like I was invested the whole time. There was just, God, so many cool set pieces. The one thing that, about Blade Runner that I liked the most was um, it, it talks about a lot of themes that were also in her, where you have these digital personalities that people interact with and have relationships with. And so this movie like got me to go rewatch her because it was kind of taking some of the things that was in the Spike Jones movie and expanding upon them in this movie. And that was like some of my favorite stuff, like definitely seeing like how a replicant who is a synthetic person dealing with like a holographic digital, you know, AI personality who seems very, very real when you talk to them, you know, and it's just like, oh, that stuff was just so fascinating. And there's a, there's a love scene that's just like, fuck, that was my favorite fucking scene in the whole movie, man. I was just like, I love those two. I, that was good. I don't want to spoil anything. Also though, one thing that I am concerned about with is that because this movie is a financial bomb, you know, so far, that might spell trouble for the director, uh, Denis Villeneuve, when he is getting ready to direct Dune, and he's had a lot of creative control over this movie, and because it's not doing so well at the box office, that might mean that on the project of Dune, he might have less creative control, which I don't think that that's the right thing to do. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why audiences aren't picking up on this, like mainstream audiences. I really thought that this would be a kind of a bigger hit. I thought it was a no-brainer, so I'm a little, like I said, I am a little surprised. Uh, that people aren't showing up for it. And I hope that this doesn't affect the amount of uh, creative control that this director is gonna have over his next project, which is Dune. And I, but I will say, Dune is a lot harder than Blade Runner. You know, no matter who's directing it, like it's a really difficult thing to put on the screen. And so I'm really interested, but I think of all the directors out there, I think that he's one of the best ones that we could have in charge of this project. And I wish him all the best in the world. And if he needs any help, he can, Give me a call. You can tweet me. I will be there. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, it's a tough one. I just did taught a 12 week class on it. So I mean, I know what I'm talking about. But uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about Blade Runner later. We'll see how it goes. We got a bunch of shit going on. Moving on to our next topic, Rick and Morty, Szechuan sauce at McDonald's disaster. I was there. Um, Szechuan sauce! Szechuan sauce! Szechuan sauce! I am a fan of Rick and Morty. I watched season three. Uh, I loved it. I thought the story arc was so great. I'm a fan of the show. I, I really like it. I've always liked animation though. I'm a big fan of like watching cartoons, especially adult animation. So for those of you who don't know what's going on, at the end of the first episode of season three, like he's freaking out on Morty and he's like being like, Morty, like all I want is the Szechuan sauce from McDonald's, the Szechuan sauce. He's gonna take, if it's gonna take nine seasons, I'm getting that sauce. And he's just like freaking out. Oh. I'm driven by finding that McNugget sauce. Nuggets. I want that Mulan McNugget sauce, Morty. Mulan. That's my series arc, Morty. Hell? If it takes nine seasons. A scientist who can do anything with space and time, his ultimate goal is like he just wants that Szechuan sauce from McDonald's. And McDonald's took notice. And so they were doing this promotion where they're coming out with these buttermilk chicken tenders. And so they had all of these different new sauces you could try. And the Szechuan sauce was one of the sauces that they were bringing back. But I think, I mean, the reason why I really wanted to be a part of this is because I think it's hilarious that Rick is making things happen in my reality. He's changing my reality. And so I was like, well, I wanna be a part of that. You know, like, I think that's really cool that this show is affecting the way my world works. I was so looking forward to bragging to my friends about getting the Szechuan sauce. I was like, so, I was actually, it was my friend's birthday and I was gonna try to get an extra sauce for him because I knew that he was a Rick and Morty fan. And it was at two o'clock. Two o'clock, they were gonna start giving out the sauces. And so I drove up all the way to Northridge. Uh, it was like a 20 minute drive. Man, it was crazy. <laughs> I 
I, I have never seen so many people at a McDonald's. It was swarmed. It was swarmed. There was people swarming in and out of that place. There was like lines, you know, like car lines, like everyone trying to get in the, uh, it was just insane. There was no parking. So I rolled down my window and I was like in, I was like trying to find a spot and I just yelled at someone. I'm like, do they have the sauce? And a McDonald's employee was walking by. He's like, we didn't get the sauce. They never sent it to us. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, they never sent us the sauce. And even if they did send it to us, they were only gonna send us like 38 packets. We would have only had 38 packets, you know? And I was just like, what? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. And he's like, sorry. Man, they fucked up. And so like lots of people were really upset about it. And like people were tweeting and like there was, and this was not, I was, my McDonald's was not the only McDonald's that didn't get it or had very few packets. Some people were getting angry at certain McDonald's in La Brea, actually in Hollywood. They were going nuts in La Brea. I saw some video of people like being super pissed there about it. No, I want Szechuan sauce. Where's my Szechuan sauce? I'm pickle rig. There was all these parents saying that they brought their 10 year old, you know, and then their 10 year old was like crying because they didn't get the sauce and oh. that they're fucking never gonna go to McDonald's again. You know, <laughs> like all these poor kids, you know, all these poor little dudes went there, you know, to get Rick's fucking sauce and like it wasn't there. But I think it's really funny because it's like, it's such a Rick and Morty lesson. Like they just got a lesson by Rick, you know, of like don't trust these corporate fucks. Like they are gonna let you down every time. I mean, it really does seem almost like a troll. Like McDonald's would be like, yeah, we're gonna fucking hook it up. Up, and then they only have like a thousand packets. I mean, what the fuck were they thinking? Well, some people did get the sauce and they were eBaying it for absurd amounts of money and it was like super nuts and like nobody got birthday sauces, nobody got regular sauces, bragging sauces. It was fucking total fail. Brie! I'm pickle Brie! Brie! And lastly, talking about Martin Scorsese. He came out and he's talking in favor of mother. He came out to defend mother. So Martin Scorsese said that, you know, before he went and saw the movie, he saw all the negative press and was kind of disturbed by it. And then he goes in and he sees the movie. And then afterwards he becomes even more disturbed by it. I mean, he's talking about how, you know, this is a movie, you know, made by a filmmaker. That's a real movie by a real filmmaker who really has something to say. It's not something that you can put in a box. It's not something that's easily consumable. Uh, it's a lot of different things and a lot of people are trying to put it in this box and categorize it and just throw it away and it's a lot more complicated than that and that it's something that you need more time with to kind of, again, develop your relationship with this movie but that it is viable art and that it really has something to say and that it was really inspired and um, it's a cool piece of art. Martin wrote, it was so tactile, so beautifully staged and acted the subjective camera and the POV reverse angles always in motion. The sound design, which comes to the viewer from around corners and leads you deeper and deeper into the nightmare. Only a true passionate filmmaker could have made this picture, which I'm still experiencing weeks after I saw it. And he was also, you know, condemning consumer culture. I mean, that is a lot of the movies now. It comes out and you consume it and then it's on to the next one the next weekend. You know, like what comes out this weekend? Uh. And he was talking shit about box office stuff. You know, how everyone's just so interested in box office numbers, you know, and how when box office numbers became public, that hurt movies because then it became the spectator sport where everybody goes in and they're like, oh, you know, it's bragging rights and people start trying to get box office receipts versus actually just making good movies. Uh, and I totally agree with what he was saying and I thought that uh I thought it was really uh well said that's mother you know like I'm still experiencing it I'm still thinking about it it's still bringing up new things for me too and that's something that that I do feel is really important is like relationships with movies I have relationships with certain movies that grow over time uh and this is one of those movies that you know you can have a relationship with that will continue to like bring up things when you when you watch it and that's what art is for art is for uh shaking you up inside, you know? It kind of like shakes you up inside and then all these weird things come to the surface and you're like, oh, whoa, that's weird feeling, oh, ah. Uh. It's really impressive that his past few films like The Departed and Wolf of Wall Street were both like really great. And it's like, wow, you're fucking still doing it, dude. Like, good for you. And I got a few other things that are happening right now. Some other big news that's going on that I kind of have to wrap up before I can think critically about everything, about art is Watchmen Club is coming soon. Watchmen Club, we're gonna be reading Watchmen together. I'm so excited. Uh, our Watchmen box pre-sale is popping off in a few days. Get ready, you'll see some big announcements uh, when it finally goes. But you can expect in our Watchmen box to get a 
comic book girl 19, Dr. Manhattan holographic bookmark with lime green tassel. We're going to have a doomsday clock lapel pin. We're also going to have a robot comedian patch and a sticker sheet. Here's Beans, she's Silk Spectre, it's adorable. <laughs> so be on the lookout, that'll be coming soon. And here's the deal, okay? If you wanna get out on this, this box, we're gonna sell it for about a month, do a pre-sale, close the sale, and then after that, we're gonna order everything, fulfill the shipments, send them out in December and January, and then start reading in February. So that's the deal. So I spent two weeks working on these mother reviews, intermediate and advanced mother. The advanced ones, like really hardcore. 